What's going on, everybody? Today, I, or we, are going to read a Smashing Pumpkins magazine. Yes, that's right, Smashing Pumpkins, like the band. I have been contemplating for the past five days on what video to make. I want to make a tier list video, but I seem to have no brain when it comes to actually having an idea when I'm thinking of tier listing. So, yeah, I'm doing this instead. So, yeah, man, it's going to be a little bit different. I've done this before, so it's not really that different. So, yeah, I haven't done this in a while, though. So what I'm going to be doing is just chilling. Honestly, this is probably going to be like a podcast. And I still need to get mics for an actual podcast because I want to do that with Alexa, my lovely Alexa. And, uh, yeah, man, working on it. But you get the whole gist or premise of this video. We're going to be going through this magazine. I'm going to be reading some stuff and just talking about honestly anything at this point. I'm kind of just chilling this video, not really focusing too much, but just vibing with my 10,000, 10,500 followers slash subscribers. Before I get into the video though, please like and subscribe. That would help me out a bunch. Let's go to 20,000 subscribers, maybe even 50, 100k. Whoa, that'd be epic. But yeah, man, let's do that. So while I'm reading, I'm going to be displaying photos on or like the side of me because I can't show you the magazine as I'm reading. <clears throat> so this magazine, Smashing Pumpkins magazine, is a Rolling Stone magazine that features the Cranberries, James, Hole, and Beck. This was released, this is issue 680, April 21st, 1994, $2.95. Crazy. Let's get into it though. And uh, I guess I'm just going to be watching or reading this. Yeah, there's a bunch of modeling stuff in here, and I'm not going to show you guys pictures of it, but there's just handsome people. You got handsome men in there, some handsome women. I know this is a Rolling Stone magazine, so there's always going to be a bunch of different ads, not just music, but there's just a bunch of clothing ads and just dudes in sunglasses. I'm, I'm, I forgot how, how many ads there are in, in magazines. I was born in 2001. I feel like I say that all the time whenever I have, I don't know, I just mention it all the time. So yeah, born in 2001, didn't live in the 90s. That makes sense, right? But this is a perfect type of thing to collect, I guess. Old magazines, music magazines with a bunch of bands. And it's not too pricey, which I like. Most of the time you're going to be spending like $15, maybe 20 Sometimes it's taxing a little bit. People put it put this stuff on ebay for 50 dollars and i'm just like stop it please my pockets hurt and if i have to spend 50 dollars on a magazine i'm just like at that point i'd rather buy a band tee or something but band tees are still kind of expensive as well on the market so this was released in april 21st 1994 and there's a article in here that says a dose of reality Kurt Cobain recovers from a drug and alcohol-induced coma. I wonder who's really watching this stuff, like if you guys were alive during that time period, and what your guys' reaction was whenever you heard the news that he was in a coma, but then he made it out alive from that coma, and then he died. You know, that must have been a roller coaster of emotions because, I mean, a lot of people idolized bro because he just made such impactful, influential music, even to this day. I think that influence and impact is pretty clear as day. So it's just so crazy how Bro's Ascension was so fast and then everything came crashing down in 1994. I mean, would you guys say that Nirvana's explosion would come in 1991, probably early 1992 with Nevermind and all that stuff? And then just two years later, he would be dead? That That's crazy, bro. Like... Oh my gosh, dude. One of my favorite things uh, whenever I look through old magazines is looking at the CD section list, paper thing, and you could just see a bunch of the freaking CDs, alternative rock CDs that were available at the time. You got Blind Melon in there, The Breeders, and some other stuff. You got Shaquille O'Neal, Shaq Diesel. Yeah. Wow. And you guys know how I buy magazines and... Sometimes, or most of the time, I try to gift a gift to bands that I interview on this channel. The reason I do that is because I think that bands should be appreciated. And every time I talk to a band and interview them, if they don't have fun talking to me, then at least they have a little gift to appreciate, kind of, you know? And I've said that a bunch of times, and I'll always say it for the people that are 
new and don't watch my stuff. But yeah, man, I try my best. And a lot of people call, call me the fake Nardwar or whatever. And I think it's funny because, I mean, I take that as a compliment because Nardwar is goaded. And I, I mean, being compared to him, I'm obviously not him. He has way more research done, way more stuff like that. And I kind of just catch the vibe and ask questions that I would want to ask the band because I'm fans of every band I've interviewed thus far. I don't think I, I'll ever interview a band I'm not into or artist I'm not into. Moving on. I think this is funny. Joe's place you got special lights, cigarettes. And every time I see a cigarette ad or cigarette stuff in general, I think of that one YouTuber and icon, Jacob Effing Jones. I think that dude is so funny and very informative whenever he's smoking cigarettes because that's kind of his whole YouTube in thing, you know, that's just lifestyle. So every time I see a cigarette ad, especially in 90s magazines, I think it's so funny. And he's probably, I'm just in the back of my head, I'm like, he's probably smoked this. Um, so yeah, he smokes literally everything. And it's so funny. Uh, I'm going to show you guys a little thing of Billy Corgan and Darcy Retsky. I'm not, not right now. I mean, yeah, you'll see a picture right now. I'm just going to keep talking and look at these words. Corgan plays most of the guitar and bass parts on record, which leaves Eha and Darcy out in the cold. Bro, what? Who wrote that? Man, I, I feel like it's so unfortunate how the original band isn't together. I mean, that would be so awesome if everybody was in the band, but obviously you're not going to get along, and I feel like there's been so much animosity and negative feelings towards a lot of the band members from all the interviews I've watched and Man, I feel like I don't get into bands like I used to, and it kind of makes me, not sad, but I used to be so invested in bands and their lore and their rivalries and all these different things, like the drama in between, which kind of sounds stupid because, I don't know, I mean, you're there for the music, right? You're not really there for the drama, but when the drama's there, you can't help but look. So that's what I... I, I, I used to do a lot. People think of arguments and drug abuse and mental breakdown in therapy, says Chamberlain. The last thing they think of is the songs. Yeah, it's the drama, right? That, like, it's just the drama. There's a sick picture of everybody. This looks like Gish era. Oh, yeah, 1991. The uh, Smashing Pumpkins in May 1991. Dude, the drip they had was out of this world. Yeah, let me get away a little bit from the magazine again i keep i don't know this is kind of like a podcast like i said so i'm going to talk about random stuff and i mentioned tier list videos earlier and i was going to make a screamo emo modern emo screamo tier list with a bunch of bands that are awesome but i just couldn't i feel like oh man i don't know i feel like i i was going to miss a band and then somebody was going to yell at me which i kind of have to just you know go through with my natural instinct and whatever comes from the negativity just let it happen but yeah man and i also wanted to do a smashing pumpkins discography like their albums tier list and then sonic youth tier list and i'm just like man and then a grunge albums tier list and i just didn't i don't know why i didn't feel confident in it even though i have knowledge and have listened to literally all of those albums so yeah, I don't know if it's just like, I don't know. I haven't made a video in about five days, so that's why I'm doing this one to ease in and just have a video out because I haven't made one in forever. Not just tier list, but is there any kind of video videos, ideas you guys want to, you know, just shoot my way? Because I will definitely listen, and I have listened, and you guys offer some good recommendations, but sometimes I feel like I'm just not, 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 not pulling through, so... Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas for my dumb ass. Dude, Dolores was so goaded. What even is that? What is she laying on? That's like a, what, a uh, uh, newspaper thing? I don't know. Dude. Bro, they were just so goaded and so lit. I don't know if it's just 90s makeup with Dolores and her hair is just rocking, going crazy. But the whole band just reeked of excellence. And... The Cranberries, I wanted to make an album tier list as well, but I just didn't do it. Okay, so you guys are going to see a picture of what I'm looking at right now. And they got the prices of what they're wearing, which is hilarious. O'Reardon wears a black leather jacket, $450 by Diesel. 
black rayon pants, $280 by Cheap and Chick from Moschino. Black boots, $175 by Mare, Mar, Mare. Noel wears a brown striped suit, $1,030. Could have just made it $1,000. Who the hell cares about that extra $30? An ivory shirt, three hundred forty-one, both by Biblos Boots, one hundred twenty-nine, by oh my god, dude, that's so much money. Mike wears a gray striped jacket, one thousand thirty-five dollars. Vest, two hundred eighty-five. Dude, were they really popping like that? Like they must have been given this stuff, cause there ain't no way, there ain't no way, bro. Here's a Beck section. Honestly, bro, I have never really listened to Beck like that. It never really piqued my interest. But I remember when I was heavy into my MTV watching phase and not on VHS, but on YouTube, he had an interview with Thurston Moore. And I believe one of the top comments was something about when you have a conversation with your stepson, your stepdad, they both look similar and Thurston's obviously older. It's just the funniest thing ever. And when you watched it, it was just completely opposite personalities, which was so funny. So that's really the first thing I think about whenever I think of Beck, to be honest. And here's a Gatorade ad, ad, advertisement, commercial. I keep wanting to say commercial. Scientifically tested, athletically proven, proven. Oh my God. Only Gatorade is liquid technology. (laughs) For that deep down body thirst. And when I read this stuff, speaking of this stuff, I find it very interesting whenever I'm on TikTok and someone has an old product of beverage or cereal box or food or canned food from the 80s or 90s or whatever. I think it is so interesting. It's kind of gross because sometimes they often eat it for that entertainment aspect and just to get views, which I find disgusting. You might die, man. You might get sick, but it's very funny to laugh at. I can't lie. And that's my, I guess, one of my favorite cores, eating old food core, core. What were you guys doing in 1994? I was seven years away from existing. I kind of just finished this magazine, so now I could really talk about anything I want. And this wasn't really that entertaining, not that many pictures either. So how am I going to extend this? I honestly could end it right now, but I feel like talking because my girlfriend left Not me in general, but she went to go see family and now I'm alone and I have no one to talk to. So now I'm making a video and I didn't even want to make a video, but I needed to. Why? Because for you guys, I've been gone for five days and honestly, you probably didn't even notice. So I don't know why why I'm making this video, but I know why for the, for the real dumb toes lovers and you guys probably stopped watching at this point. So I should probably end it, end it hardcore band. New Jersey, I believe. No. Maryland? Ignore that part, but I'm keeping it in. Goaded band. That was the end of my Smashing Pumpkins magazine read thing, and we didn't really read it together too much, honestly. And that's fine, because I was kind of yapping for about 30 minutes, and while I edit this down, it's probably going to be about 15 minutes, maybe, if that. That's enough from me. Please like and subscribe. Keep the music alive. Thank you guys for watching this music magazine. Read along. Smashing Pumpkins, read along with me. Goodbye.